Let's close our eyes for prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We bless your name because your mercies are renewed day by day. And we thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for everything you've done. We thank you because you manifested the height of your love and mercy and grace on the cross of Calvary. And we're asking, oh Lord, that that grace, that love, that mercy will be poured down on everyone here today in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh Lord, that all that you have given through Christ Jesus will be ours as we believe on you in Jesus' name. That Lord will have a heart of love and gratitude unto you. Because of what you have done and because of what you are still doing and because of what you will continue to do, we pray, Lord, that your mercy will never stop in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We come, Lord, with appreciation, with affection for you, with the understanding that what you have done merits gratitude, love, appreciation from us so that lord as we glorify you more and more Amen. Amen. and be glorified in the midst of your people Amen. in jesus name we pray Amen. we're looking at matthew chapter 5 in matthew chapter 5 this morning we're in verse 7 blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy do you want to understand how Jesus Christ presented the message of heaven into the heart of men? Because we're told, now, it says, blessed are the merciful. Now, as you look at the message of Christ, you will see orderliness in the message. It actually goes from one point to the other. And one point leads to the other. And there's no way you can readjust the points. What I mean is, you cannot put this verse 7 in verse 3. You cannot start by saying, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Why not? Oh, because the nature of man. Since Adam fell, the nature of man was not the nature of mercy. And from Adam... And unto Abel and Cain and unto the people that followed we can see that love is not a natural fruit going growing out of the natural man grace and mercy are not natural fruits growing out of the heart of the of the natural fallen man and therefore we have to start in the dust in the ground where we were sinners falling because of our sinfulness we needed to start with the mercy of god but then we come for that mercy of god by being poor in spirit blessed at the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and as you connect the references on the kingdom of heaven you understand that means there's conversion except to be converted as this little child or as little children, ye cannot in any wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. There is the poverty of spirit. There is humility. There is being contrite in spirit. And it is that repentance, that penitence that brings you into the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God, the kingdom of God. But then after that, it says, Blessed are they that mourn after you get born again you identify with god god is sorrowful it grieves my heart that have made man on the earth because every imagination of the thoughts of the heart of man is evil only evil continually and then he comes to israel and he said moses it grieves my heart that these children of israel are like this these ten times they have, they have rebelled against me and it grieves my heart that i even call them out now moses let me alone and let my heart anger wax hot against them and i will make of you a greater nation than they 
and Moses said Lord how can you do that the Egyptians will think you are not able to take them to the land of promise they will not know that the problem is with them the point is this because of the grief in the heart of God now you become born again you are in the kingdom of God and you identify with the Lord and you mourn because of the crime because of the sin because of the rebellion because of the disobedience that we find in the world and then it says as you mourn the people in particular you are mourning for my father is not born again i'm mourning my mother is not born again i'm mourning my brothers and sisters are not born again i'm mourning or my relatives are not born again i'm mourning it says blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted they begin they become born again one by one now mommy is born again now daddy is born again now your brothers and sisters they are following on and they're getting born again you are being comforted i'm happy now because although i was grieved although i was unhappy although i was mourning what i was mourning for the lord has answered and now these people my relatives are now becoming born again and then it says blessed are the meek after you have entered the kingdom after you have been comforted then you become so meek why the sheep is following the shepherd your nature has been changed you are no more a goat because jesus said at that day he will separate the sheep from the goat you are no more a snake because jesus said oh generation of vipers how can you being evil speak good things you are no more a dog because it says don't give that which is holy unto dogs now your nature has been changed you are no more a dog you are no more swine that speak and you are no more goat you are no more serpent or snake now you are sheep my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and as sheep you are meek you are lowly and you are gentle then there's a hunger in your heart now blessed a day with your hunger and thirst after righteousness because you've come alive and that life shows itself reveals itself by the very fact that you get hungry and what are you hungry for what are you thirsty for you are hungry and thirsty for the very nature of the almighty god that is righteousness and is this panting there's this longing there is this desire in your heart i want to be like my father i want to be like my savior i want to be like the lord himself and then that hunger that thirst makes you to yearn and to long and to desire passionately for righteousness and holiness the lord puts it in your heart that because the nature of god is holy and the nature of god is righteous therefore you want to have that same nature and then after that now that you are filled it is that a feeling of righteousness that leads us to the mercy therefore you need to understand now you know where you are coming from you've gone through the first milestone the second milestone the third milestone the fourth milestone and now after that fourth milestone you have mercy shown revealed demonstrated flowing out of you that is recognized by god listen when you talk about mercy generally you know there are people they're still behind <coughs> they have not gone through verse three they have not been poor in spirit they have not been converted they have not entered into the kingdom and you say we are merciful too i see a beggar i see the unfortunate in life i see the people that are less privileged than i am and then i have mercy on them i give them this i give them this that mercy if it's before verse 3 
before you enter into the kingdom has no recognition in heaven now you come into verse 3 but you have not come into verse 4 when you see evil you don't mourn it doesn't concern you when you see evil you cheer the people that do evil hey guys thoughts go ahead destroy everything scatter it this government this organization this school i'm born again now i cannot do it but you people you can do it we will be supporting from behind i will be putting foil into the fire now you don't mourn when you see people doing evil scattering schools destroying organizations scattering churches and then you say you are showing mercy not recognized the mercy the verse that talks about mercy comes after your field with righteousness and this is christ and it's building an edifice it's building a house of truth and he wants you to understand the place of mercy and then he says blessed are the meek now have you seen somebody trying to show mercy i've seen that quite a lot when i was much much younger and i can't tell you all the story i just need to illustrate it to you you know sometimes when my mother was not around was not at home and we children were around or at home there'll be you know of course you know, there will be other women there in the family that will serve, that will give us food and when we never were hungry this woman well of course cook good food put it on the table hey come here is food come and eat your mother is not here but i will i will have mercy anyway i'll feed you and then give us the food well because i was hungry i had to eat but actually a lot of the times i lost appetite you know when people give you things and they try to show you what they call mercy but there's no meekness there's no love there's no gentleness they harass you they almost torment you and they say that is it take each and each that kind of mercy that comes before you are meek is not recognized i'm showing mercy i'm showing mercy place it in the proper order and then it says blessed are they with your hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled now as you are filled and you are righteous the lord now expects you've gone through all these milestones you've had all these experiences now you can show mercy that doesn't mean we don't show mercy before we are born again you have a child you have to close that child you have to feed that child you have to educate that child you have to show mercy on your children when your children offend in the house you have to forgive them when you rebuke them you have to draw them near that showing mercy but that mercy doesn't get you to heaven that's the normal thing to keep relationship you have to show that kind of mercy but it comes before the salvation but that one is not recognized as if is a fruit of the spirit to be rewarded no but the mercy that we're talking about now is not the general thing it's not the one that everybody shows it's the one that comes after you have experience with god notice then this beatitude follows the blessedness number one of kingdom benefits for the poor in spirit number two it follows divine comfort for the mourners number three it follows the inheritance of the meek and number four it follows imputed and imparted righteousness for the hungry and for the thirsty this character of mercifulness flows out of a heart made righteous by the divine hand of grace look at the verse again verse 7 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What a great principle. Great principle. Second Samuel chapter 22. In Second Samuel chapter 22, I'm reading from verses 26 and 27. Where is the merciful? Thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the forward, can you believe that? This is talking about God. And with the forward, thou wilt show thyself unsavoring. With the forward, with the wicked, with the unrighteous, thou will show thyself unsavory. We're told in Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. I'm reading verses 3 and 4. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor. You show mercy, have the mercy of God and the truth. Demonstrate it, live by it, and teach out and walk in the mercy and the love of God. Stretch out a hand of love, a hand of grace, a hand of mercy unto all the people. Then in verse 4, here is the result. Thou shalt find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and in the sight of men. Sight of God and man. As we look at this message, manifestations of God's mercy, we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. Now, you need to watch God. I need to get a lot from God. And you need to get a lot from Christ. It's Christ who has come to show us. You see, all these things that Jesus said, everything Jesus preached, he demonstrated. And you don't even need to be a theologian. All you need to do is just read the stories in the Bible, in the Gospels in particular, about the Lord Jesus Christ. How he related with people. What kind of way. How he showed mercy. And you'll see that he met different kinds of people. Who did he meet? He met his own disciples. John. He met James. He met Andrew. He related with Peter. And Matthew. And all those disciples. And he related with Judas Iscariot. Now, was there any difference between... Jesus' action to John and then to Andrew and then to James and then to Peter was there any difference between the action of Jesus to John or Judas Iscariot? Ah yes, much, much difference. I thought we were to show us, of course, yes. Yet, you understand there is a pattern. Was there any difference between the relationship of Jesus Christ to the centurion and then to Herod? Of course, yes. Herod wanted to see Jesus perform a miracle. Did he? No. Herod asked questions from Jesus Christ. Did Jesus even open his mouth to answer? No. And then you find the centurion coming. And the centurion said, my servant is sick. So immediately Jesus said, I'm following you. Let's go on. I'm going to heal him. Why the difference? There's a pattern. And so we need to understand when you read the Bible, the life of Jesus is the interpretation of his message. Otherwise, you know, when you read the Bible, you become sentimental. And it is just a sentiment of the milk of the human nature. The milk of the human nature. That's the reason why you need to follow the pattern. You find out, now we're talking about mercy. 
What's God's pattern of manifesting mercy? The pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. Number two, personal gratitude and the ministry of mercy. Personal gratitude and the ministry of mercy. Now, why do we show mercy? I've just told you now. The Lord has forgiven you. And the Lord brought you into the kingdom after forgiving you. Then you are so grateful. If God can do so much like this for me, then I need to do a lot for my fellow man. Gratitude, personal gratitude, and the ministry of mercy. Number three, promises of great manifestations of mercy. Promises of great manifestations of mercy. Let's come to number one, pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. Let's look at Isaiah chapter Isaiah chapter 55 verses 6 and 7. Isaiah 55 verses 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and your righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him understand then the pattern of God showing mercy we are children of God now we're in the kingdom we are followers of Christ now we're in the kingdom we follow the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ let the wicked forsake his way you're not going to have mercy on the smoker and give him all the money he needs to continue smoking. You're not going to give mercy and show mercy unto a drunkard and give him all the money he needs to continue drinking. He says, I will die if I don't see this drink. I need mercy from somebody. You Christian, show mercy unto me. I need to drink now. You're not going to show mercy and give him all the money he needs so that he can destroy his life with alcohol. If somebody is using hard drugs, and he's uh, you know sniffing uh, stopped all that uh, cocaine or whatever and because of this he has stimulated his body and then because of that his body is crying out for drugs and then he's, he doesn't have any money he runs to you please 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 uh, this 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 if i don't see this i will die have mercy on me and give me money i need to buy this now and then you say well the bible says that blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy follow the pattern let the wicked forsake his way and your righteous man his thought and let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our god for he will abundantly pardon that's the pattern we see in the words of god you know especially new converts when you become you know a new convert and somebody a sinner doesn't have accommodation and then he comes to you and he says uh, can you please accommodate me then you remember blessed are the merciful because they shall obtain mercy you don't check up anything you'll say will you follow me to church if you come to live with, of course i'll follow you then they come in after putting them there then they bring prostitutes girlfriends whatever and they're messing up in your own bedroom and eventually you came home and you discovered ah you see i'm a christian this cannot be please please don't let us fight pack your load go and then mercy have mercy on mercy blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy as a new convert you say what will i do because blessed are the merciful you keep him there and then you went out one day before you came back he stole all your, you just got your salary took everything away and took some valuables away and ran away you came back home all the money is gone everything is gone for one week he goes to spend the money after enjoying himself now he, everything is finished he comes back and then he kneels down have mercy on me have mercy on me it's the devil it's satan i will not do that again have mercy on me and the fellow is not born again and then you say but blessed are the merciful 
for they shall obtain mercy. Will you not follow any pattern? Why don't you look at the scripture? That there is a pattern of God's manifestation of mercy. Then you bring him in until he destroys you. And if you have any daughters, until he defiles your daughter. God doesn't do that. It says over here in the word of God. That when the wicked forsakes his way. And the unrighteous man forsakes his thought. Then he returns to the Lord. I will have mercy on him and pardon him. In uh, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That's God's, that's God's pattern. In Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you are see quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the loss of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath as even as others but God was rich in mercy this is what we were then we came to the point where we need to repent we came to the point where we need to have Jesus Christ as our savior then he tells us God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins as he quickened us together with Christ by grace are you saved verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The reason God shows us mercy, we couldn't help ourselves. We couldn't have that salvation at our own price. We couldn't pay the price. And so we came pleading. We came begging. We came repenting. We came believing the Lord. And now the Lord showed mercy. But he says, now, nah, now, nah, I've shown mercy unto you. You are created unto good works. Don't go back to what you were doing before. First Peter chapter 1. In First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We are begotten unto a lively hope by the mercy of God. You repent, you turn away from sin, and the mercy of God is available. Now, that, that mercy of God, does it just come? Or do we look for it? Do we pray for it? Do we ask for it? You know there are people that uh, they, they just keep quiet And you say You are a Christian You all know That you ought to show me mercy You know my need You know my situation You know my condition Of course you know You know that you ought to show me mercy And they are so proud That they will not even come to ask you for anything And even after you have given them that favor they just go their way they don't even have any thank you in their mouth they say that that's your duty you're a christian as a christian shouldn't you have shown me mercy what have you done that I ought to say thank you that's your responsibility it's like they have a right to get what you're giving them but does god act that way if you don't ask him even for this mercy does god just distribute his mercy everywhere without any appreciation at all jude 
verses 20 and 21. Jude, verses 20 and 21. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, and then it says praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy. Looking for the mercy. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unto eternal life. In Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading to you from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 we ask him it's mercies the mercy of god is not that cheap that it just cut a seat everywhere in hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our profession for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come. You have to come. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to hell in time of need. God's manifestation of mercy begins with forgiveness or salvation. Thereafter, it continues and increases as we faithfully serve the Lord. As we faithfully serve the Lord. As we faithfully serve the Lord in obedience to His word. And He always grants us mercy according to His truth. God never contradicts the truth so as to show us mercy. God never says, now i'm the god of truth i'm going to push the truth aside because you know if you act on truth if you act on doctrine this person will never receive this mercy and he needs this mercy and i want to show him this mercy for this time i am going to abandon the truth i'm going to forget the truth i'm going to cover up the truth i'm going to modulate i'm going to change I'm going to a kind of adulterate the truth so that I can show him mercy. Never. You hold on to the truth. And while you're holding on to the truth, then you show mercy according to the truth of the word of God. I, there are many passages I will show you. I'm just going to show you seven that connects mercy and truth. Mercy and truth. To tell you and to show you. When you are showing mercy, if you are following the pattern of God, you show mercy according to you, the truth of the word of God. Number one, you have Psalm 25, verse 10. Psalm 25, verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Unto such as keep his covenant unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies so then you understand there's the association of mercy and truth you don't abandon the truth in trying to show mercy if you are following god's pattern number two psalm 57 in psalm 57 verse 3 psalm 57 verse 3 he shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. They are joined together. You don't have to. In fact, you cannot. If you are a child of God, I will show mercy and forget the doctrine. Well, you know, if you really think about the truth of the Bible, if you apply that this fellow, I'll not be able to show mercy unto him. At this time now, this new year, all I want to do this new year is just to show mercy and to show mercy. And you preachers there, all I want to preach this year is just to preach mercy, just to preach mercy. I see that you know if you are talking about doctrine and you are talking about truth and talking about righteousness and you are they say the truth stand on it if i keep on emphasizing the truth these people are not be able to show truth 
Now I want to become a different person. A sentimental person. A loving person. A merciful person. Yes, you are going to show mercy. But according to the truth of the word of God. Because there is this inseparable connection between mercy and truth. Number three, you look at Psalm 61. Psalm 61 verse 7. In Psalm 61 verse 7, He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. Mercy alone will not preserve the church if the, mercy, if the truth is gone. And you know in all these other churches, they just love their people. Many of the churches are churches without correction. Churches without instruction. Churches without discipline. Churches without the truth. And then you say, you know, see all these churches, see the way they are. And I never hear, I've never heard that anybody in that church was confronted with the truth in any way that will make him to, you know, feel as if the pastor is not happy with him. Why don't we in our church just show mercy? Yes, our church is built on the truth. And he said, this truth will never leave you. And you have to hold on to that truth. And you have to act and work and live and minister according to that truth. And it is only then, with the truth in place, you'll be able to show mercy according to the pattern of God. Number four, Psalm 85. Psalm 85, verse 10. In Psalm 85, verse 10. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mercy and truth. Truth and mercy will show mercy on the basis, on the foundation of truth. Number five, Psalm 89, verse 14. Psalm 89, verse 14. Justice and judgment at the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. And you see, even our children at home, sometimes they don't understand. You, you are correcting your children and you are telling them, my little boy, you were born after I became born again. I had a commitment to the Lord before you were ever born. And it's the commitment on standing on the word of God. And then, after I became born again, standing on the word of God, I got married. I married your mother. And then, before you were born, before your mother was even pregnant of you, we prayed. We said, Lord, this truth will remain in this family. We'll pass it to our own children. And now you are born. And we have not showed you with that truth since you were born. My boy, sit straight and act right and do the will of God. Make sure you are born again. If you are not born again, you are not going to get a lot in this family. And then the boy might become wayward, wanting to destroy himself and destroy your ministry. Then you call him and you say, My boy, Things are going to be tough. And then because you have been reading the Bible with your child, he you knows a little bit of Bible. Oh, daddy, show mercy now. Isn't God a merciful God? And the boy continues, doing what you say, this is not right. You bring disrepute and reproach to my ministry. Don't do this. And the boy keeps on like that. You'll feed him. You see how to feed him. Because God gives us harvest and food and rain and sunshine. He gives us the basic necessities even when we're not born again. But when it comes to special favor on that child, you say, I would have given you this, but I'm sorry I can't do it. Ah, daddy, don't talk like this. Are you not, are you not a preacher? Be merciful now because, and then your child, as well when they are growing much older, they'll quote the Bible back at you. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
I don't know the kind of father you are, but in my own case, I'll say, my boy, sit down. And let's run through this mercy subject. And then we go through, and I say, mercy and truth, mercy and truth, mercy and truth, mercy and truth. Now, which one do you want to hold? Then, you know, when I teach, especially when I'm teaching young, young people, I demonstrate, I say, do I bring a cutlass and cut off your, one of your hands? And then it remains, well, how can you do that? Ah, but that's what you are doing. You are cutting off the truth and you're holding on to the mercy. Oh, daddy, I understand. You always have a Bible verse for everything. <laughs> mercy and truth. Keep them together. Don't let them depart from you. You cannot show mercy in isolation without holding on to the truth of the word of God. If you abandon the truth, the mercy of God will abandon you too. That's how God operates. And then we're told now number six. Is it number six or number five? Number six. Have I read Psalm 89 verse 14? Yes, I have. Justice and judgment at the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Now Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Pastors, pay attention. You know, sometimes some of the members of our church will say, Well, pastor, that's when they become a little bit free. And so I, I like members of church to be free. Not frivolous, not too familiar, that will bring content, but free in the normal way. When they're a little bit free, they say, Pastor, you know, uh, we want to tell you, really, we love you, we appreciate you. If you just will close your eyes to some things that happen, I don't comment about them. You don't talk about them. And you don't hold anybody responsible for anything that happens. If you just close your eyes, you'll find out. If you can just, just, just practice it. And if things go wrong, just, just turn the other way. And things are not all right, not truthful, just turn the other way. Even when you know, even when you know that the people are not dealing with truth, just close your eyes for six months and see the people and just show mercy and when the people come for counsel don't ask them embarrassing questions don't ask them hi about this what do you know about this pastor if you can do that and close your eyes to these areas and show mercy and love to the people you'll find in six months the whole church will be transformed ah by mercy and truth iniquity is purged you hold on to the truth of the word of God. That's the pattern of God in manifesting mercy. Now number 7, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 28. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 28. Mercy and truth preserve the king. Mercy and truth preserve the church. Mercy and truth preserve the leadership. Mercy and truth preserve the king and his throne is upholding by mercy. You see then that we cannot as we cannot dissociate, we cannot divide, we cannot separate mercy from truth. Let's come back now to Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Why? And we shall be merciful because we have received mercy from the Lord. And because we have received mercy from the Lord, we have gratitude. We are so grateful to God. And that personal gratitude will lead us into the ministry of mercy. Let's look at First John chapter 4 gratitude leads us to actions of mercy in first john chapter 4 reading from verse 10 herein is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved if god so loved us we ought also to love one another 
if God so loved us, we ought to show gratitude. That Lord, I don't merit your mercy, and you have shown me mercy. After I repented and turned away from my sin. Now, Lord, I am grateful for what you have done. And because you have shown mercy unto me, I'm going to show mercy to my fellow man. I'm going to show mercy to people around me. And you begin showing that mercy in your family. In your family. And uh, then to your wife, you show that mercy. You show that mercy. What's mercy? Mercy is favor undeserved. Unmerited. Mercy is favor unmerited. But it is not before repentance. It's not before repentance. I don't know what kind of family that will be. If your wife keeps on stepping on your toes every time and uh, gets on your nerves every time and uh, you know say hey dear this hurts why are you acting like that mercy and then she goes away even the way she pronounces the mercy and the way she looks at you and the facial appearance of pronouncing the mercy is like you know she wants to go away mercy or your children in the family doing all those things and you know that this cannot be right this cannot be all right and every time mercy that's not christianity that's not even the normal life if you're going to have the normal life it's a two-way traffic and you are grateful for the thing you have received from the lord you're also grateful for the things you have received from your fellow man and that gratitude in your heart will then lead you to show and to demonstrate the life of mercy, grace, love, and compassion. It tells us in that verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God, love his brother also. That's gratitude, personal gratitude. Then you continue with that ministry of mercy. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Reading from verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. But when did God forgive you? When you repented. When did you get saved? When you turned away from your sin. Couldn't you have been saved a day before the day you got saved? Yes, you could have been saved. Couldn't you have been saved a year before you got saved? Yes, you could have been saved. Why were you not saved a year before you really got saved? Because you didn't repent a year before you repented and the lord the mercy was waiting for you the love was waiting for you the grace was waiting for you but you didn't repent but at the time you repented the lord said all right you are ready now and then he shows you the mercy and you are born again and it says even as god has forgiven you to show mercy I'm, I'm not talking about giving food I'm not talking about giving clothes I'm not talking about the normal normal thing it makes his rain to come his sunshine to come upon the just and upon the unjust that's all right those are the normal things basic necessities of life we're talking of now favor and merited we're talking of real mercy of God that brings you into the depth of relationship with the Almighty God. And it says, even as Christ, as God has forgiven for Christ's sake, even so you do one to another. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. And then it says, and walk in love as Christ also. 
has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savor. That's what he has told us to do. We do it like God does it. And we do it because he has shown us mercy. And because we have received the mercy of God, then we also demonstrate that mercy unto all the people. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. In Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, by the manifold, many-sided manifestations of the mercy of God. Because you have received these many-sided, many manifold mercies of God, it says, because of that, I beseech you that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, after you have received that mercy, what's the result? Look at verse 8. Or, ex or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy or cheerfulness. Or cheerfulness. And not that somebody is dragging you to it. And you know the kind of mercy some people show. They are really all... Uh, unhappy within and sad and sorrowful and roughful and tied up and bound on the inside but they say we should show mercy calm and then with a frown on their face and with anger and irritation in their heart they say take i'm showing mercy i will do my part even if you don't do your part you show mercy with cheerfulness you are happy at it and you know that because you are grateful to God because of what God has done for you and the things the Lord has given to you you're so grateful and you're so cheerful and you're so happy and you show that mercy unto all the people with cheerfulness verse 9 let love be without dissimulation abhor that which is evil cling to that which is good be kindly affection this is the mercy be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another that's the mercy not because of the mercy you have received you're so grateful to the lord pride as quit pride as let Pride has gone away from your life. Always thinking about yourself. That you are higher, bigger, more powerful than other people, more intelligent than other people, in honor, preferring one another. That's the mercy, it's humility. Remember, you have passed through the gate of being poor in spirit before we come to this mercy. You pass through the gate of mourning and being comforted before we came to this mercy. You are passed through the gate of being meek and lowly and humble before we came to this mercy. You have come through the gate of being thirsty and hungry for righteousness and you have been filled before we came to this gate of being merciful. That means then the humility will not quit, will not leave your life. It says, in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business. Uh, do you know, let's say you put all your capital. And as you put all your capital into a particular business, then a brother in the church just uh, is looking for work. And he also knows how to do that thing. And then he comes, I had my brother that you are establishing business. Ah, yes, I am. Uh, would you take me so I can become a partner? I don't know whether I want to take a partner because all my savings, all my cap, everything I've got, I'm putting it into this business. Uh, please help me. Okay, if you're going to come, what are you going to contribute so that at least in the capital of starting the work that you're going to put something down? Let me tell you, my brother, I don't have anything. All I'm asking for, just have mercy on me and let me join you. All right, you can come. And then, as you put all the capital down, the fellow now, as he came, when the profits comes, he wants you to divide that profit 50 50. 
because we are there together and then when you make a little gain and then at the end of uh, you know maybe a period you say my brother can you have this then he says how much gain did we make you tell him as a christian we have to be truthful and he says this is what you are giving me and you are taking the other part are we not christians yes we're christians you contributed zero i contributed hundred and now we have a gain i'm even merciful enough to give you a patch and you're looking for 50 50 and this fellow he will not come to work in time he will still be you know he, he, he likes listening to pastor's cassette in the morning you wake up he will listen to cassette listen to cassette when he comes to work at 10 30 ah my brother why now you said you were joining me ah you know i'm a christian now in my life i don't play with pastor's cassette <laughs> anywhere i'm walking and then later you show him the way out then he goes about in the district brother so and so doesn't have love brother so and so doesn't have mercy and you people you'll be carrying the rumor along with him brother so and so doesn't have mercy go and ask brother so and so you will know that your brother who came to tell you with zero capital and yet having something is lazy it's not working mercy must be on the basis of truth we put everything upside down and then we oppress the people that are even doing their best and the people that are doing nothing and just carrying rumors about that the people you are lifting up if we're showing mercy the whole bible is there and it says not slothful in business for vent in spirit serving the lord rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer distributing to the necessity of the saints giving to hospitality bless them which persecute you bless and curse not rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate be not wise in your own conceits be not wise in your own conceits recompense to no man evil for evil that's that's the mercy you are not paying them back for their evil provide things honest in the sight of all men if it be possible as much as lies in you live peaceably with all men dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto all for it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. That's what the Bible says. Listen. The Bible doesn't say, give him accommodation to come and live in your bedroom. The Bible doesn't say, your enemy wants to defile your wife. You are a child of God, be merciful and do everything to your, you know, to your enemy. Let the enemy come and take your bedroom. Now, while he was far away from your house, he you wanted to defile your wife. Now, since, you know, and you said, ah, you don't love me. You are my enemy. You wanted to defile. Uh, I say, oh, please, please, have mercy on me. Don't you remember the Bible? If your enemy hunger, feed him. All right, now come. You need accommodation. Come and stay with me feed him that's food you still keep him in his place but you give him food understand the scriptures don't do things i'm preaching this way because we have had people in this church that have destroyed their families because they're trying to apply scripture and they, and they put everything upside down and some people are taking away their wives some people have defiled their daughters You know sometimes uh, you know some of our leaders sometimes you know and i tell them i said my brother i love you and i have to do what i'm going to do i don't love to do this i have to do it somebody has to do it my brother and it happens to be me and what can i do i have to apply the scriptures i said i, I appreciate your love 
appreciate your kind heart appreciate your gentleness appreciate your philanthropic attitude i appreciate everything you have done but my brother see what what, what has happened and the brother i'm thinking about is that you know he had somebody in their extended family just mercy to come and live with uh, him in the house and then after living with him in the house just mercy you know like any of the children not his own child any of the children you know you are free this 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 and mercy and eventually immorality happened inside his own house and he just 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 loving brother just nice brother and then he came to me and he said pastor uh, something happened in my family i said what he said immorality was committed i said is it your child no not of my children by the grace of god everything is all right but this fellow living with us in the family and i took him as a child in fact people in the church they don't know that this is not my own child and this is what has taken place i said now if i don't do anything about this the church will not understand and i cannot come to your state and make announcement that this my brother is innocent is pure nothing bad at all how can i do that and then it's going to be a precedence for other people and we have to stop him preaching for some time and then i will phone him and say my brother how are you doing he knows privately i love him but you know private love is not satisfactory if there is no public affirmation you know you love somebody privately you phone him you talk to him i love you you know i told you i just had to do this if i don't do it like this the church will not understand oh, yes pastor i understand i understand and then when i come to the public i don't act like that i just you know i just act normal i just preach my message and then, because if i show public affirmation of that private love it's go i'm going to send a wrong signal to the church you have to be strong when you come to the public as a leader you show your love on the ground in the private and i know the brother was suffering he was unhappy and i know that you know he was thinking but this is not my child i'm just trying to show mercy and see what this fellow has brought me into now that's why i'm telling you balance it up balance it up so that you don't show a kind of mercy that is unscriptural that will take the ministry away from your hand and so if your enemy is hungry give them food you don't have to come and eat it inside your house you can give them the eat it in their houses and you don't have to bring them in and make them partners in your business if they are enemies you love them you pray for them but you don't act to them as if they were friends jesus is the greatest model of his own message when they were asking jesus question who will betray you is it this is it this did they tell judas ask the lord no they have been watching that although Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the group, it's like Jesus never really had direct one-to-one -one communication with Judas Iscariot. Check out. You'll not find anywhere in the Gospels. Because Jesus knew him. And he knew what he was up to. And he knew what he was going to do. And Jesus did not speak publicly, but he knew. He did not act in the same way to Judas Iscariot as he acted to john the beloved when they distributed the food to the five thousand and then 12 baskets remained yes 12 disciples 12 baskets that's food and jesus will not mind for judas to carry his own basket of bread and john to carry his own basket of bread and james to carry his own basket of bread that's food but when it comes to deep revelation of the word of god of the mind of god he never revealed anything to judas iscariot why didn't he take judas iscariot along to the mount of transfiguration when he was sorrowful unto death and he was praying why did he take, take judas iscariot along with him and when he was showing the principles and the revelation of the kingdom why didn't he call judas iscariot and say now let me tell you this no feed them feed them 
and have a loving heart but a wise balanced heart be balanced in this love we're talking about i pray the lord will help you Amen. and then it says therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him if he thirst give him drink for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good i come to point number three promises of great manifestations of mercy promises of great manifestations of mercy matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verse 7 blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy when we are merciful we'll obtain mercy give me a good amen, amen. <laughs> you know I, I i think you need to understand you need to understand a teacher when you look at your class and you're teaching the you know you're teaching the lecturers and the professors and you know the high level leadership a team that's the way you teach we have to teach you what's appropriate for you if i went to the crusade and i'm teaching the crusade people about this same subject i'll teach at their level if i go to a general retreat and i'm teaching this i'll teach at their level when i come to the congress and i'm teaching something like this i have to teach at your level for you to understand as leaders so you don't go back to your churches and then manifest this kind of mercy in the wrong way and then ruin the ministry the promises of great manifestations of mercy in proverbs chapter 3 verses 3 and 4 proverbs chapter 3 verses 3 and 4 let not mercy and truth there we are again mercy and truth not mercy in isolation let not mercy and truth forsake thee bind them upon thy neck write them upon the table of thine heart so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of god and man in proverbs chapter 11 proverbs 11 verse 17 a gracious woman retaineth honor and strong men retain riches a gracious woman a gracious woman retaineth honor women are supposed to be tender gentle humble having a meek and quiet spirit and merciful merciful and you know women should not be people that are so strong so aggressive that let's say the pastor for example is uh, looking into some things in the church and then he feels i, I think uh, you know these people i think they should have learned their lesson now and i think that once they learn their lessons are we not going to show mercy and then you show mercy in church administration and then the wife just happens to know that uh -uh. he then sees uh, so and so sister so and so ministering and then when they get home the wife is saying ah my husband i think we have women ministering in the church yes my dear i thought sister so and so was under discipline yes my dear when was she restored oh she was restored about two weeks ago hmm i thought i was the women leader in the church yes of course but i didn't know about this woman being restored she's a woman she's under women ministry yes but the women ministry is under the pastor too and since the women ministry is under the pastor my wife do you think that the pastor will come and take permission from you before doing his work because the fellow is under the women ministry the pastor is the overall leader in the church and when he believes he ought to show mercy unto those women unto those men that's his right and a gracious woman 
at home will not put fire into the husband again and say that woman should not be restored now i know her days days and days ready to fight the husband a gracious woman a loving woman a tender woman will show that these tenderness is there you understand what tenderness is all about a gracious woman verse 16 retaineth honor you retain your honor my dear sister if you don't instigate your husband at home to show less mercy now verse 17 the merciful man doeth good to his own soul but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh verse 25 the liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered also himself proverbs 21 verse 21 proverbs 21 verse 21 he that followeth after righteousness and mercy you see the connection righteousness and mercy not mercy without righteousness he that followeth after righteousness and mercy we're told that is the one that findeth life and righteousness and honor psalm 37 psalm 37 reading verse 25 in psalm 37 verse 25 i have been young now i'm old yet have i not seen the righteous forsaken nor is seed begging bread why because he is ever merciful he lendeth and his seed is blessed psalm 41 reading from verse 1 blessed is he that considereth the poor the lord will deliver him in his in time of trouble the lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies the lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing thou wilt make all his bed in sickness there's a merciful man that considereth the poor psalm 112 112 in psalm 112 reading from verse 4 112 verse 4 unto the upright there arises light in darkness it will guide his affairs with discretion unto the upright go back to verse 4 unto the upright there arises light in darkness he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous a good man showeth favor and lendeth he will guide his affairs with discretion surely he shall not be moved forever the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is fixed trusting in the lord his heart is established he shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies he has dispersed he has given to the poor his righteousness endureth forever his horn shall be exalted with honor as we show this scriptural mercy the blessing of the lord will become abundant in our lives in jesus name in isaiah chapter 58 isaiah chapter 58 reading from verse 10 and if thou draw out thy soul unto the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday you see that's talking about mercy you draw out your soul to the hungry you satisfy the afflicted one then it says your light will rise in obscurity and your darkness will then become as noonday and the lord shall guide thee continually Amen. Amen. And satisfy thy soul in drought, 
and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Another amen. amen. You believe it, another amen. amen. That's why we're together. That the Lord will use you to build the foundations of many lives. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge. To repair, to repair, to repair. You know, that, that, that's part of showing, showing mercy. You repair. You mend the net of fishing in the kingdom. You don't tear the net. You don't break down the bridge. As when the church, and you see conflicts between this and that, between that person and that person, you are committed to showing mercy and mending and building not tearing down you see children of god having a ministry that will glorify the lord you'll be a repairer of the bridge a restorer of paths to dwell in restoration will happen through you Amen. and the lord will use you in this ministry of mercy apply the scriptures make it balanced follow the pattern of god and follow the approach of christ there will be mercy in your life and mercy, merciful people will be coming your way every time. Amen. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Balance it up. Mercy and truth. Mercy and doctrine. Mercy and pure worship. Mercy and the knowledge of the word of God. Balance it up. Balance it up. Balance it up. Mercy. Mercy and truth. Don't abandon the truth in trying to show mercy. Don't adulterate the truth in trying to show mercy. Don't trample on the truth under your feet because we are trying to show mercy. Mercy and truth. Mercy and righteousness. Mercy and holiness. Mercy and righteousness. Not mercy in isolation, then you destroy yourself, destroy your family, destroy your church. Hold on to the truth. And then, while you are keeping the truth, show mercy. Lord, let the workers influence you to change the doctrine asking you pastor mercy pastor mercy pastor mercy and destroy the doctrine hold on to the doctrine hold on to the word of god and then in the midst of standing uncompromisingly on the truth show mercy earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints in the midst of contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints show mercy don't destroy the faith because you want to show mercy feed your enemies give them food don't abandon the salvation don't give your salvation to them don't give them your wife don't offer your children to them give them food Don't lose the precious treasure the Lord has given you into the hands of your enemies. Give them food. Feed your enemy. Give them drink if they are thirsty. But don't abandon the precious things of the kingdom because you are trying to misunderstand mercy. Don't sell your ministry into the hands of enemies. Because we are trying to show mercy give them food give them drink and give them material things blessed are the merciful 
for they shall obtain mercy. The wise unto salvation. Tell the Lord to help you. Tell the Lord to give you the mind of Christ. So you will know how to carry out the word of God. So you know how to live. By the standard of the word of God Mercy Mercy and truth Mercy Mercy and righteousness Mercy Mercy Balanced scripturally Remain a child of the kingdom child of the kingdom and within the inspiration of the Lord while you are in the kingdom let that inspiration lead you to mercy love compassion a personal gratitude to the Lord all the Lord has done for you let that personal gratitude lead you into the ministry of mercy and our personal gratitude to lead us in the church who have helped you taught you everything you know Brought you into the experience of salvation. Be grateful to those leaders who have sacrificed to bring you into the love and the mercy and the grace of the kingdom of God. Personal gratitude. And let that move you to to show mercy to other people. The way we have helped you help others The way we have lifted you up From nothingness Until the level you are now Do it to other people too Lift them up Personal gratitude And the ministry of mercy Be tender Be gracious be loving, be appreciative, show mercy. And your fathers and mothers who have fed you, raised you up. Now that you are growing up, show mercy back to those parents. Why it not for them, you'll not be where you are now. personal gratitude and the ministry of mercy then you can trust in the promise of the Lord to the merciful he will show himself merciful to the upright he will show himself upright to the benevolent or show himself benevolent to the compassionate he will show himself compassionate to the upright he will show himself upright balance it up mercy and truth
excited today because God has been so faithful to me. I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. <laughs> I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. I'll be graduating in May. I didn't 